hi guys to hi guys to everyone today i'm with a legend of the rock music billy sheehan i don't know how to say from which band but he, of course he most well known for the amazing band mr big it's an honor finally for me interviewing one of my idol hi billy really it's an honor and i see that you have that the, the, the piece of this piece of history that unique bass nick bass that's amazing can you hear let uh, can you hear let us hear something i'm getting confused you want to hear something on this yes sure okay okay i just woke up so That's a... That's that's amazing. That th thank you so much, Billy. Um, before speaking about all of your career, all, uh, career, of course, I want to speak about you and how because you are known as the biggest and maybe the most influential bass player in the world. And I want to ask you how how started the the approach with this amazing instrument. How did I start? Yeah. Well, uh, when I was very young, uh, I had older brother and sisters, and so they were into the, all the rock music uh, of their day. Yeah. Uh, but I was just a little kid, so I got influenced by them and learned a lot about music very early yeah. in my life. Even though was, most kids my age weren't listening to music yet, but I did because I had older brothers and sisters. Yes, true. Sure. Then in, in my neighborhood, there, uh, there was a band, uh, two, two brothers, they lived in a house and they were in a band. So the band would practice at their house. And this guy's name was Joe, Joe Hesse. Yeah. And I'd go over and I'd hear his bass and think it was the coolest sound in the world. Yeah. I was just a, I was just a little kid. So I'd have to sit outside, sit outside the house and listen to the bass. The and I was excited about it. And uh, then eventually Joe, uh, let me come inside one time and showed me his bass. And I was fascinated and I loved it. And I, I just fell in love right there and I became a, a bass player. So, uh, and yeah. right away got in bands and started playing uh, small little things. And then uh, that was in about 19, oh man, 65. 1965, oh my God. <laughs> you played <laughs> bass. Before, before your parents were born. No, my dad, no, no. My parents was born in uh, eight, 50, 18. So, yeah. Okay, well, then okay. maybe not, but okay. No, okay, <laughs> yeah. But you, I mean, you are, you have a particular bass because it's considered like a unique bass play, bass in like an instrument. So it's uh, for me, uh, it comes naturally to ask you what did you do into your bass and what kind of instrumentation do you use also as amplification? Well, when I was young, uh, there were basically two kinds of bass, maybe more than two. There was Fender and Gibson. And uh, there was also Rickenbacker and Hoffner, but Fender was the number one. Uh, it Fender. still is, really. Fender, Fender Classical or Fender Jets? Oh, uh, Precision, of course, by far, yes. far, 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 way more. More hit records have been done on a Fender Precision bass than yeah. any other bass in the world by a huge amount and that's yeah. the base everybody used so uh and there were other bases too guild and epiphone and hoffner yes and i have an epiphone an epiphone thunderbird bass great great i'm a bass player as well oh fantastic wonderful uh so um i love the fender bass but i also love the sound of the gibson or epiphone because they had big giant pickup right here yes, yeah. and it was super low and deep and uh so when i got my 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 precision bass my first real bass um i wrote to gibson and asked him if i could get one of those pickups i don't remember how it happened because i was very young i didn't have a way to pay and yeah. then in the mail showed up a gibson ebo pickup so i put it in my fender bass yeah and uh, 
I didn't know how to wire two pickups to one output. Yeah. So the pickup came with its own wiring already, so I just put it in and drilled another hole for uh, the two new knobs and the extra output. That's now I had, because um, I knew all my amp, which was a Fender Super Bassman, my first yeah. real amp, had two inputs. Two inputs. Two channels. Yeah, two channels. I use one channel for the low pickup, this one, and another channel for the high pickup. For the high now, all pickup. All that happened. Let me show you something for a second. Hold on. Okay, sure. And here she is. That's amazing. That, that's that's amazing. the base. It's a mystery. That's the base I started with. Ah, the I, first base. I put yes, this base yes. back up in. It has no more finish left. As you can see, it used to, it used to be sunburst. Sunburst, long, long yeah. ago. There's a little tiny bit of the sunburst left here. Yes. But this is the base that I did everything on up until the early 90s. So it's basically your first baby, we can say. So it uh, it still plays great. Uh, yeah. People, people always want to take a photo with it. Yeah, so of course. I mean, uh, I will do it to me as well. <laughs> There are about uh, 20 or 30 copies. People made copies of that bass. Yes, that. because you made something, you customized bass bas based on, on your taste and it became like uh, a legend because yes, it's, yes, it's yes. unique in, it is, in a, it is own genre. But now I want to just focus, before speaking about you again, I focus about your main band. Because I think before Mr. Big, <clears throat> you had a musical career as well so that's correct before yeah, mr big who was what, what was doing Belichian? well oh i started out uh my first band in high school mm -hmm. well, even before that i played uh, the first time i played with people it was with uh two brothers mm -hmm. or one uh randy and ray schmaltz sure. and uh ray was an organ player okay. and he was completely blind he couldn't, ne could not see from birth. He, he could not see, but he was a brilliant organ yeah. player. Yeah. And so we got together with a drummer named John Zogaria. He's Italian, and uh, uh, we we played all kinds of songs together. Listen and uh, I think we played one show, and that was it. We because uh, we were young and we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, then sure. I then I got in a band in high school called. Uh, we started a band called Opus One. Opus and, yeah. and Opus One was a horn band. We had four horns, tenor sax, uh, alto sax, trombone, trumpet, three singers, wow. guitar, bass, drums, keyboard. And an orchestra was, almost. <laughs> yeah. So we did songs by Chicago, Blood, Sweat and Tears, wow. all the horn bands that had, were very popular at the time in the very early 70s. Yeah, yeah. I know Chicago as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then we started, uh, then I started Talis. Uh, and uh, we went through many, many changes, many, many different yeah. drummers. Uh, I quit, I came back, they quit, they came back. Uh, <laughs> years and years and years went by. But Talis opened up for Van Halen in 1980. The huge and so set. when, when, when uh, I got to meet those guys and I stayed in touch with Eddie mostly. But wow, then uh, the summer of 85, uh, out of nowhere, David Lee Roth uh, contacted my office and uh, they flew me out to LA to start a band with Dave and uh, wow, I mean uh, that <laughs> the two biggest uh, I mean also icon in the music world, not rock, <laughs> not metal, <laughs> not R&B, just music. I don't well, I don't know for the two biggest, but we we sure had a good time. And I so mean, uh, after that, I started Mr. Big. Yeah. And, uh, and while I was in Mr. Big, I also started a band called Niacin with Dennis Chambers mm -hmm. on drum, famous drummer. And then I uh, did a few other projects. Uh, yeah, so we will go started. through that with uh, because you play with the also huge musician, and we will go through that because there are some my of my favorites as well. But of course, before speaking, Mr. Big, I wanted to ask you since, of course, he passed away. He passed away this year. If there is some memories that you carry on your heart about Heidi Van Allen that you want to share with your, all these fans? Well, absolutely. Uh, Eddie was. Uh, a great motivating force for me when I saw Ed Van Halen and I thought that's that's nice. my band that's a, that's what I love that's the yeah, greatest that's thing amazing. ever 
And we, uh, I'm very honored that I became friends with him. Yeah. And he would, uh, we would speak on the phone. I went to his house to jam. We performed together one night uh, for a benefit show. I went up to the house with him and his brother and recorded a little bit one time. And and uh, he was just a wonderful man. And uh, uh, what a terrible loss to us. Yes. Uh, to not only to the music community, but to all life. Uh, he was just a Van Halen, changed changed the world for a lot of people. Yes, so I sure. Lo I love all those guys. Uh, Alex, Mike, Dave, Ed, Wolfie. I'm, I'm the only guy that's ever played with every member of Van Halen. Yes, sure. And of course, I wanted to ask you, um, of course, how, how, I mean, how was the approach with, with Mr. B? Because, I mean, you joined Mr. B, okay. But how does it happen? Because everyone knew that knew the story of Mr. B. But I wanted to ask you, how was the beginning with them? Well, I left David Lee Roth. I wanted to start a band. I knew Pat Torpy. Pat Torpy. And I, I just recorded with him. Who the rest in peace as well, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, he, uh, I recorded with him the day I left uh, David Lee Roth. So I remember while I was recording with him, I'm thinking, man, this would be great to start a band with this guy. <laughs> then later on, we had a meeting. I left David Lee Roth and I thought, you know, I should call Pat and get it going. So I contacted him. I already knew Paul Gilbert a, a, a bit too, because oh, okay. he, he was in LA. He used to come see. Musician. He used to come see my band. He used to come see Talis. I remember yeah. him in the audience because he was the tall one in the back there. <laughs> yes. And uh, he was just a young, young kid at that time. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and then we looked for a singer. I found Eric, and we got the band together. Got a great oh, manager, nice. and uh, we uh, we had a wonderful band. Uh, great, uh, great uh, memories, and well, we uh, I still uh, very, very. Uh, uh, Happy about that. You experience. made the history of that that period of uh, the the type that we could say the hard rock music, because it's made by powerful hard rock song ballads. There is everything in Mr. Big. I for me. Oh, thank you. And uh, I wanna. These questions came from a huge huge fan of you and Paul Gilbert and the band. And if if you you could say just uh, hi to this guy, it's called Calogero, from uh, Sicily. From where? Sicily, because I'm from Sicily. Oh, Sicily, okay. Yeah. What's his uh, name? Calogero. Uh, spell it for me. Calogero. Calogero. Yeah, he made Gary. this question for you. Yes. Ciao, he asked, Calogero. He asked me that since you made so many uh, albums with Mr. Big that everyone knows and love it, uh, if there is one in particular for you that you love mostly or enjoy maybe playing in live, most than other albums of Mr. Big? Well, I, I love them all, but uh, there's no denying that Lean Into It was our, uh, was really, I think, our best record. It had everything that I love about Mr. Big and everything I love about rock music in it. Yeah. And uh, it was just a fantastic, but, but I love them all. I, they all have a very special place in my part, in my heart. So that, that, that's that's nice. And uh, this is a question for me because I, when I was a, a little kid, I got Going Where the Wind Blows statue on my arms. Uh -oh. so this is one of my favorite songs that always helped me in the tough situation. I wanted to okay. ask you, if you um how these songs born if there is specific meanings about the song or a specific memory about the period when the song was written by written all by. i all i know is i didn't play on it <laughs> but it's in in any case it's an amazing song but there is a song a specific song that stayed in your heart about mr big well uh to be with you is a great song i still love the song and uh uh uh, when we play it, the whole audience is smiling faces and everybody's having a wonderful time. Some people are crying and uh, have a lot yeah. of joy. So well, it's still a, a wonderful song. All of our heavy stuff, too. Uh, uh, Daddy Brother, uh, uh, to Alive, yeah. Alive and Chicken, uh, uh, yeah. everything. <laughs> yes, and I mean, Mr. Big is, um, is formed by talent, super talented musicians from you to Paul Gilbert to Attorney to um eric, eric martin but i mean this uh, it seems like that it just like it was uh, something that you wanted to do like have a super talented band or it just was luck like oh well, no it's it's what i wanted to do i wanted to have a band that had uh good solid hard rock and bluesy soulful vocals uh, like 
like Free or Humble Pie or bands like that. I love bands yeah, like that. We sure. can jam and do things. And yeah, that's what yeah. I wanted. And uh, I remember after the very first Mr. Big record, when we were finished the record, I thought, man, that's we. This is what we got. It's great. We, we were amazing. very. I was yes, very happy. and of course, Paul Gilbert has is become one of the most. A huge guitarist in the world for his technique, his way of playing, and of course I wanted to ask you how he's playing playing with with him, because you play it with a different huge guitarist. But I was playing with Paul Gilbert, and if you had some funny thing, because I also know that Paul Gilbert is a funny guy. If you have some memories play of, of him, and maybe during some gigs, some some moments you spent together. Oh, we we had a wonderful time. It's hard. It's hard to pick one. It's hard to pick one memory. <laughs> yeah. so we, we had a, a good time together. Yes, but of course, I also knew that that Paul left uh, left the band and Rich Godzen took her place for a little bit. Uh, this brought some, uh, what can I say, some difference in the influences of Mr. Big music. Music. Uh, you ask again, please. I don't quite. I understand. say that I I knew that for they that for a while. Paul Gilbert left the band, and Rich Godson came into the band. This brings some uh, new influences, some new, um, you can say, some new... Um, there is some difference from the previous work with Paul. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to remember. That was actually... How long ago was that? That was uh, <laughs> over 20 years ago. So I, I don't... Uh, Rich is a dear friend of mine. Yeah. And, We play together now in the winery dogs. We have a wonderful time. But you know, anytime you change anything, yeah, the the, uh, the result is different. Okay. Before speaking about your the other project, I wanted just to ask you which because one of them, um, as far as I know, one of the biggest um, gigs you had was live in Budokan, Budokan, in 1997. If I'm not wrong, what what memories do you have about that huge uh, live, huge gigs? Well, we did Budokan almost every tour, so <laughs> uh, uh, we uh, it was hard to differentiate one yeah, tour from sure. another. But we uh, we always had a wonderful time in Japan, and uh, the Japanese people were incredibly nice to us. Budokan, yes. legendary, uh, legendary. The Beatles played at Budokan; it was yeah. pretty cool. Uh, but uh, you know, we have, we we played. Sometimes people forget because when they see Mr. Big, oh Japan, Japan, Mr. Big, oh it's about Japan. Yeah, we played in Japan a lot. But we also played in Brazil. We played in Italy. We played in Germany. We played uh, we play the, uh, yeah. uh, in Singapore. We played in England. We played all over the and USA. There, and there so was some... it, it was it was uh, we have a, we're, we're very lucky. We have a, a lot of uh, friends all over the world and yeah. uh, many many memories like Budokan, but in many other countries too. So we. Uh, We we uh, we're very lucky to have that kind of uh, uh, memories from all over the world. And there is some particular memories of other. I mean, touring is general all over the world that you still have about with Mr. Big. Oh yeah, yeah thousands, <laughs> <laughs> thousands of them. You know, we played on the beach in uh, uh, Brazil uh, in uh, Santos Beach. Uh, uh, And uh, it was a hundred thousand people on the beach. Wow! Oh my God, that should and, be amazing. But if, uh, now, as I told you, I want to speak about uh, your other project because you you played with huge musicians like Portnoy, Steve Vai, and I mean this was a project, if I'm not wrong, called the Amazing Journey. And it was like uh, something to remember who the band. Amazing Journey was four shows. Yeah, and and uh, I think we recorded one of them. It's a yeah. tribute to the Who, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was a riot. We had a great time. It, it was yeah. fun. I love the Who. Went back in the early days in the '70s, we uh, Talis played many, many songs by the Who, and uh, so I'm a big John Entwistle fan. It was that was enjoyable to do. Yes, you also have been in the famous G3, if I'm not wrong again. Uh, I was. Well, I, play, big... I play with Steve Vai, and Steve played yeah. G3. So yes, I, yeah. I don't have any association with G3. It was just I was with Steve. Yes, and I was with playing or not with another huge musician like Steve Vai. I mean, because he is a uh, he is a, a legend. He is a di uh, we can say a, a different style from Paul Gilbert. Uh, you, uh, they are two different yeah. guitarists, but at the same time, two super talented, two legends. 
the, also you there is, uh, you play with with the uh, and Marty Friedman. I mean, with the most amazing guitarist. Um, I mean, how it feels to be part of all these huge names? Because for me, if I when I read all these names, I was like, oh my god, I knew, I knew, it was like amazing. I mean, uh, I was for you. There is some particular, uh, I don't know, well, gigs that you loved mostly. No, I, uh, I uh, see those are the people I played with and, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know what I've, I've, I've spoken about them many times. I, yeah. I it's just you, it's uh, all, all wonderful people. Yeah, they are amazing people. And also, um, what about um, in 2003, if I'm not wrong, is uh, comes out uh, Influence and Connection. That saw the yeah. participation of different uh, huge musicians. Mm -hmm. What about this uh, release? Well, we thought it would be a good idea, but it never it never worked. We thought it'd be nice to do a project and have every every band yeah put out a record and have their fr the people who influenced them play yeah. their songs. But the Mr. Big One was the only one, and it didn't go anywhere after that, and it wasn't a, a big success. And yeah, we, we we abandoned it, and that was and that. Before going to the end, I want to ask you, of course, uh, your personal influences of Belichian. Uh, generally, that's an illegal question, but I will answer it again now. <laughs> the reason why I say it's just illegal because I, every interview I do, everywhere, in Indonesia, in Brazil, in, Africa, in is, Paraguay, yeah. in Argentina, in Chile, in Italy, in Finland, in Sweden, in Denmark, in England, in <laughs> Ireland, in Scotland, in France, in Belgium, in Spain, in Portugal, in Germany, in Russia, in China, in Taiwan, in Thailand, in <laughs> Korea, and, and everybody asks me, uh, who are your influences? So I will just as well. So I always my... say, I always say, before an interview, you can't ask me who my influences are because I've answered it so many times. But because you, I didn't tell you that. It's only fair. I'll tell I, you who my. I could just say just to pick five artists or five albums. Just it's to impossible. Pick up Impossible. Sorry, there's so many. There's a, <laughs> yeah. and even uh, when when there was MySpace years ago, mm -hmm. on the opening page I listed about a, <laughs> 200 people that were my influences, just so people would 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 know that and and not not ask it every time. But you asked yeah. me, it's fair enough. Uh, Tim Bogart, uh, uh, Tim Bogart, uh, Jack Bruce, John Atwistle, uh Jocko, Stanley, Oscar Peterson. Uh, about 40 classical composers, uh, yes. about maybe 400 bands, <laughs> uh, at least 20 saxophone players. Uh, so I could go on and on and on and on. And on, yeah. and on. There's many, many influences. Yeah. Uh, before just the, the current, pro I mean, the, the future plans of you and Mr. Big, I want to ask you just because many times people say that the bass is just like an unuseful and uh, maybe the less important instrument in, uh, in the world, in a band, since I'm a bass player yeah. as well. And just could you please say to the people, this is the wrong, is a, is a wrong quote, is the wrong things that bass has a, a huge uh, potential on a band well uh, it's up to people's uh, opinion if that's their opinion you know, <laughs> I, I, lo I love playing bass and I uh, it's a uh, I enjoy uh, to this day very very much I still practice all day long here in my studio yeah. and write and record we recorded over 120 songs since the pandemic started and I have all my bases in here now and yeah, the other room is a uh, is uh, another that's 40 or 50 bases. Oh my god. So it's, uh, we, uh, I, I, I love playing bass. And if you love it, good. And if you don't, well, find something else you love. Yes, for sure. And of course, uh, your your future project, which, which are? Uh, I don't have a future right now because we don't know when we'll be live music again or uh, ever. Or yeah, ever. Yeah, that, that's, that's the, the worst things. And I think it's the same for Mr. B. For? For Mr. Big, if there is something going on with them, or we just stop it for a little while. No, there's, there's no news on that. No, sorry. Okay, so people that want just want to see you or listen to you, just get they, what they have to do, just uh, listen to your music, 
listen to your album. Yeah, because yeah, there's no live shows. There's no live yeah. shows. There, there may not be until 2000, 2022. Yeah, that's the wrong, the bad things. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, that's, that's yeah. the situation we have. So I'm home practicing, enjoying playing bass, uh, enjoying my kitty cat. Uh, and enjoying our beautiful home in the woods, and uh, my wife oh is my God, you are likely to. right now, and uh, she'll be home soon again. And uh, you're likely to be... live in the woods. That's amazing. And since we are in the end, I want to ask you if you could could just leave a message to Billy Shem fan, um, Mr. Big fan. I don't know everyone in the world fan, and uh, that's it for today. <laughs> Well, I just want to tell everyone, uh, uh, hopefully we'll have live music again sometime soon. Well, and I uh, so. I'm uh, practicing a lot. So next time you see me play, I'll have a lot of new things. Well, and you I, are already the, 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 the number one bass player in the world. So what, what, what else we could expect? No, in my mind, I'm not, the, I'm not anything. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning. I learned there's a lot to learn. Each a lot time I saw a live of Mr. Big, I just stay like this and I say I will I will never be able to do with this it's too, too hard for me I was trying to play some songs sometimes of Mr. Big and I was like okay okay I have to go slow and learn slow because it's not easy <laughs> because well uh, anything I can do you can do or any bass player can do if you spend amazing. enough time and work at it hard enough nothing yeah. is impossible nothing is impossible Yes, just that maybe this is another illegal question for you, but you prefer playing with pick or not? Sometimes, rarely, very rare, but okay. sometimes I, I got one right here. Yeah. It's a stone pick made stone of stone. Pick. Oh. And I play bass with that sometimes, but it, mostly it, my fingers. It helps the sound to be more tough. Yeah, it's a, it's a very sharp. Tom. This is an advice for me for that I that I took for me. So thank you for the advice. I will just I will just keep it in mind because I usually play with fingers. So yeah, I will keep it in mind. Well, I, I I don't think I've ever I may have recorded I don't know if I've ever recorded with a pick. Yeah. Ever. Uh, and live maybe just the reason I have picks is to give away. Yeah, to, to to give to the fan. Yeah. When I play guitar, I use a pick, and sometimes on bass, I'll do it just for fun. And it's, yeah. it's a, some people, some bass players are, are upset that other bass players use a pick, but I think a pick is a great way to play bass. You use if yeah. you use uh, if you use a pick, that's totally cool. Pick, thumb, one finger, two finger, three finger, four finger, electric drill, anything you can use. It. Yes. So thank you so much again, Billy Shin. It was an honor for interviewing a legend and my pleasure. I hope that one day I could interview Paul as well because it's like uh, I can find him in anywhere. I will hope to interview him as well. So thank you so much and uh, stay safe and have a good day. Thank you so much, Billy Shin. Grazie mille. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Get enough Cause I'm addicted to that rush